Sapio file. Noun. One who is attracted to intelligence. Join us, three fun loving lovers of knowledge, who are ready to dig into your favorite topics with our very own nerdy diatribes, words of wisdom, and takes on life as millennials. Welcome to the Sapio Files. All right, everybody, welcome back. And this week we have a guest host. So, hello. Hi. Tell us about you. Mm, I'm Caitlin. I'm friends with all these lovely people. And in Florida. I'm in Florida with Caitlin. And the two of us are having kind of a 30th birthday vacation. So, what, this kind of segues us into what we wanted to talk about today. So, since we're on vacation, we are in Florida, Northern Florida, which is which I think is important because Northern Florida is much more a part of the South than Southern Florida, which is basically New York transplant. <laughs> so I think that that's important too. So we want to talk today about travel and different cultures we've experienced in different places in the world. Every area has its own quirks, its own things. And what have you guys noticed about different places that you've traveled to? I do travel all the time for work, but I travel predominantly in the United States, but also to Ireland a lot. Um, I've been to England and Scotland, so basically Ireland, the UK. Um, I've been to Antigua, Guatemala, um, outside of work. I have made several trips to Canada, um, different parts, French speaking and English speaking. I've dipped my toe into the beautiful landscape that is Iceland, but have not gone to explore. So I'm, I'm kind of doing country hopping and, I guess in, in its most simplistic form, you'll find cultural differences wherever you go, whether it is um, going from my small town in Massachusetts to Brooklyn, New York for the first time, or if you're, you know, going into Quebec City and um, learning that even if you learn French in high school, just like the different dialects and how how people interact with one another and how they use slang can confuse someone. So I guess I'll I'll start with that and just say that you know, you, you can find a cultural difference just walking across the street from someone because, I mean, we're, we're blessed to live in a country that's one big melting pot. So yeah, I, and it's I know huge. That, it's a huge country. Yeah, so um, I, I think it's interesting just, like, microcultures within towns, within cities, and then, like, obviously, like, you you said that where you are in Florida is very much a part of what we find as Northerners to be a stereotypical self. Definitely. So I think that that's an interesting thing to note too that you know there's a difference between the big big cultural differences like going to ireland for the first time um from the as someone from the united states obviously yeah and i i also remember being very very um excited to experience but also confused the first time i went down to florida and drove through georgia as a 16 year old like you know if, if you've never heard of grits and you know people look at you like they, they use their very, very nice welcoming accent and then say, bless your heart when you don't know what grits are. Like, it's just... Yeah. Okay. So can we talk about bless your heart for a second? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Is it me? Or does it seem like when somebody says, bless your heart? I mean, I think they mean it as a nice thing, but I always take it as like, you stupid little person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor little innocent thing. Oh, bless your heart. So it's to like me... A backhanded compliment almost. Right. Not even a compliment. <laughs> Any listeners who are um, originally from the southern part of the United States, if I am getting this incorrect, then please, you know, definitely write in. Or Absolutely. From my, my understanding is I've only ever heard that in the southern part of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, like, the eastern southern part of the United States, talking okay. towards Alabama, Mississippi, like that, that group, South Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia. A little I bit did of hear North somebody Carolina. say it yesterday outside of this hotel. And, um... It, it seems to me that it's just one of those things where kind of like I, I know that my family has said, like, they'd be, ta they'd be talking about something and they go, heart of gold, though. Like, I feel like that's kind of like the same thing. It's like, it's oh, like I don't know. mean to insult this person. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, got a heart of gold, bless her heart. But like, it, it's you know. always like, bless her heart, but yeah. <laughs> it's like to say something. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting. Um. We should preface this by we're all from the northern part of the East Coast. So, we, actually, there are differences between where each of us are from to a degree. But we're yeah. all relatively part of the same region to some extent. Um, Kayla's originally from Massachusetts. 
Marissa is from Long Island. Caitlin and I are both from northern New Jersey, although I live in central Jersey now, and Caitlin lives in Virginia now. So um, we're and, all from that part of the world. And um, I know for myself, um, and then both of um, Chelsea and Kate, too, um, I was born and have family in Vermont, and I know that Chelsea yes. and Caitlin both spent a significant amount of time there, too. So that's, you know. Yeah, the Vermont culture is a bit different as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. We go there skiing quite a bit. It, it's very interesting, the the Southern culture, because, you know, I've been here a few days now. And the first day I was here, while well, I was waiting for this one. I'm to sorry. Get, um, to yeah, get here, those, because... I saw all those beach selfies of you. <laughs> I was taking pictures of myself on the beach, because I'm like, well, I'm just hanging like, here by I'm myself. Like I'm sorry. <laughs> Not my fault. Yeah, well, so Caitlin was delayed Couple many months. times. Um she was supposed to get in Thursday night. She got in Friday, Friday afternoon. afternoon. For so, an hour and a half flight. Hour and a half flight, a uh, 15-hour delay. So, <laughs> lovely. Um, so, while I was waiting for her, in addition to going to the beach, I walked around. I went into different places. I found an outdoor bar that I quickly realized was a local spot. It was not a tourist spot. <laughs> um, and it was it was very interesting to talk to these people. Obviously, they all have their drawls, their, their cool southern accents. And apparently, I have a kind of ambiguous accent because they could tell north, but they couldn't guess anything more than the northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. They just knew that you're not from the south. <laughs> but one of their friends who was there was originally from Brooklyn, who now lives down here. So they, you know, they love to pick on him. <laughs> so this, so this one guy who was there, he was like, "So I got to ask you, northern girl, <laughs> like, <laughs> what is the difference between a Yankee and a damn Yankee?" And I'm like, uh, the damn Yankees sing songs in a musical? Because, you know, that's my experience. <laughs> um, he's like, no, no, no. A Yankee comes and visits, says hi, and then they go on a plane and they go back. The damn Yankees come down here and live here like they own the place. So this guy here is a damn Yankee. You're just a Yankee. <laughs> that's funny. So they have, like, all of these little sayings, um, the bless your heart things. Another thing I've noticed here, and Kate, um, you, you said this too, the friendliness. God, people are oh. too friendly down here. They're it's so creepy. like, hello, hun. Like, you know, they're just they're just so warm and welcoming. We made friends um, at a store. So there was a handful of women from North Carolina who were here. And we made friends with them in the store. And they were like, oh, well, you got to tell me the truth. And th does this shirt look, look good? And, like, they were, like, trusting, very kind, very opening. And they were like, that color looks fantastic on you. You should check out that color. Very, very friendly. No, it's. People from, and I, and I want to say, like, I visited many times um, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, the Georgia area. I've been to New Orleans, which is a whole culture in, in and of itself, <laughs> yeah. uh, if anybody's ever been to New Orleans. But you're so right. Everybody is so friendly and helpful, and they look at you when you're on the street. Like, it's very, like... <laughs> yeah. They stop their cars for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there are were, there were parts of the, of the South that make me just based on my own personal experience, feel like an outsider. But then there are other parts of the South that make me feel much more comfortable than New York City ever did, mm -hmm. even though technically yeah. that's a northern city. So, like, it is very interesting on that front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even I even found that when I moved down to Virginia for the first time. The people were so, like, f normal, very friendly and, like, opening doors and s just, <laughs> like, little things like that that people in the North, I'm like... You don't get that in Jersey. <laughs> People are mean in Jersey. It's just... Well, we should we should talk about that. So as Northerners, are we just as a default mean? Or are there different nuances to it that I, people need to think about? I think we're just we're honest. intentionally mean. It's just we go about our business. We do what we got to do. And we're, we just... Our, our culture, I think, is more rushed and hurried. Like, especially if you're yes. in New York. Yes. Like, and down south, everything is kind of like, you know, slow, take it easy, chill, you'll get there eventually, you'll get it done eventually. So it, I just, our lifestyle, and maybe that's why we come across as like, rude, because we don't have time to stop and talk to you, we got to get to where we're going. And right. if right, and it's I'm less forgiving. I'm not saying that's what I believe, but that's what I've noticed. Yeah, like, I would think that I'm a friendly person. I think the three of you are all friendly people. But in general, <laughs> not that friendly. Well, well, at least like in the New York 
uh, New Jersey area. I think as you get further north, like up in Massachusetts, Vermont, I think that changes a little well, bit. Well, New England is a little bit different. So let's yeah. talk tri-state area first. Talking, yeah, the metro tri-state area, like New York City, Jersey, Long Island. Well, look, basically New York City is like a really bad, but um, I don't know. Yeah. So I think that you brought up a really good point. It uh, It has a lot to do with what we're expected to do and Mm -hmm. how the world is set up. And I wouldn't say that, as a general rule, individual people are mean. I think that it has to do with ability to have time to deal with strangers. You know, what you're expected to do with your jobs, with everything in life, there's a lot that's high pressure and rushed and so quick. And Mm -hmm. really one of the reasons that we decided to come down here is to relax for Mm -hmm. a week. I know. Right? And it has a lot to do with the energy. So I think it's the big city energy, particularly in the north, New York City type energy. And individual people, once you meet them, are actually very nice people. But there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of high pressure. And I think that translates to, all right, I'm buying a coffee. High person in line. I don't have time to hear about your life story. I'm sorry. Doesn't mean I'm not a nice person. Doesn't mean you're not a nice person. It just has to do with I have a lot that is going on at once because of just the pace of life. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a different pace. I think you brought up a really good point with that. I would say maybe we're blunt more so than rude. I would say mixture. Um, yeah, and I mean, by, by saying we, I'm not saying us right here. No, no. But north. I think there is a level of blunt. Kayla, you want to say something? Go ahead. You made a good point, and I'm not saying that, like, obviously, like, Boston, you'll find a lot of individuals who are also in a rush, who are doing, like, going about their professional lives, where you may not get as much social contact with someone in the city, especially if they're walking to work or walking from work or commuting and everything. But I have to say, like, coming from North Central Mass and being on the border of Vermont and New Hampshire and having, and, you know, visiting Maine many times, that there is... A, a difference. I, I think I remembered when I when I first started the position I hold now. Um, now I'm based in Boston, but I I was based in Manhattan for three years. And I remember telling Chelsea when I first started that I did not think I'd be able to survive in New York City because it was too rushed and no one was talking to me and um, no one would look me in the eye and I and I don't I didn't think I could get used to it. Mm-hmm. And then I think a week later. Chelsea and I were in the city. This is great. And, and like, I don't know, you, you, you remember this really well and you've told this story. Yeah, but. so she was living with me in New Jersey at the time because she was being based in Manhattan. And she was like, I don't know, I'm a small town girl from New England. I don't know <laughs> what I think about Manhattan. It's a little scary. I'm not going to be able to keep up. A week later, we're there and she's you know, power walking, the New York City walk, the way you walk through New York City, like, just get there, just go. And she's like, oh, these tourists, why do they have to stand in front of every building and make peace signs Uh and take a million pictures? They're logging up the sidewalk and I have to get there. So it's it's something about the energy of the place that just converts you. And you're a really good chameleon. You can go back and forth from that big city lifestyle to, like, the nice small town girl, um, how you are in Vermont, how you are in... New Hampshire, when you're um, at the lake, all yeah. of those places, you know, it's, you can kind of chameleon go back and forth. And I think we all can do that to an extent. Like, like I was saying, we met a lot of friends here, but if we were at home shopping, yeah. we probably wouldn't have stopped for 20 minutes to talk to people about, oh, well, where did you grow up and tell me about your right. life? And um, there was also a guy there in the store who was from North Dakota. So yeah. we did have a conversation with him as well about, his you tattoos. Know, he talked about all his different tattoos um, and about oh, cool. what life was like. Um, he said, yeah, the water here is really nice. And up there, you know, the lakes, they take a long time right. to warm up. And we were saying, yeah, that's kind of like the Jersey, the Jersey Shore. Shore. The Jersey Shore is very nice, but it's not warm enough to go in until maybe mid-July. And here the water is gorgeous. Like, I was in the water for an hour and a half yesterday. It's warm, but it's, you know, it's a different culture. That's another thing. I wonder if the weather has something to do with different cultures. Like, if you're naturally in a more, like, the weather is kind of slow, sleepy, are you naturally more like, it's okay, let me just talk to people. And if you're in the, um, 
okay, there's all these storms and there's a harsh winter and a hot summer and all these things in between. Does that make you more go, go, go? Because one of the things about the northern part of the country is we do have four full-on seasons most of the time. It was kind of winter until the end of April this year. <laughs> That's like most spring. There, yeah, yeah, we jumped right to summer. Right to summer. Um, right to summer. <laughs> generally speaking, though, there are four seasons in the north. So does that have something to do with it? Because I wonder, you know, if you have this nice beachy, like I'm looking out the window here, and there's palm trees and there's sun and it's warm and you go outside. So if you have this nice beachy environment. All year round. Where it's, yeah, warm all year round. It's like January, you can still go walk outside and it's nice. Does that make you more relaxed? And I think maybe that has something to do with it as well. Hmm. I'm sure it does. I don't know. I, I think to some extent that's absolutely true. But then my brain automatically thought Minnesota. And mm. uh, Minnesota has some of like, the most interesting weather patterns, but everybody that I've met there has a been like ridiculously into sports. So oh, Minnesota, um, but also like really, really nice and chill and, and they have like some severe weather in Minnesota. So I'm wondering if maybe like in, in some cases where because of the weather in Florida, people have culturally made that a hub of relaxation and therefore people are more relaxed there. Whereas, like, like you know, th- there's nice weather in other places, but maybe that's not what people associate it with. Like, maybe, like, they, they might associate Florida with relaxation, but maybe people associate Maine. They might associate that with, like, fishing or, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, so it's slightly different. It's not, like, just, like, relaxation. So know? associations so, that we make with places. Cool. Yeah. We should talk about, because we mentioned a lot about tri-state area versus the south, we should talk New England. Yay! So, New England. What are some of the biggest differences you notice about New England and the rest of the world? I really like New England. I do too. It's, I mean, it's a little cold for my liking, but I really <laughs> like the environment in New England. As Kayla mentioned, uh, Caitlin and I, and actually all four of us, go skiing in Vermont, whenever possible i mean marissa you've been there you haven't gone seeing yet but um the weather was too bad it was yes too cold. i we still went yes but anyway so we've all we but we've all been to vermont to i've been to new hampshire kayla's been to new hampshire quite a bit caitlin has been there that northern small town energy right. so I, like- I do like it too yeah. so um kayla having lived in new england and lived in the tri-state yeah. area what are your things that you've noticed the most about how life is different? I mean, other than we, we've said that the tri-state area has that, like, go, go, go New York City culture. But aside from that, like, what what was different? There's quite a bit different. I mean, like, I don't even know if this is, a, if, if this is officially a word or a definition, but, like, a, I'm sure it is, but microcultures, like, yeah. I feel like Massachusetts, even in itself, like, has a bunch of different microcultures. There's, of course, like, anybody, you know, raised in Massachusetts, born and raised, or I was born in Vermont, raised in Massachusetts from age seven on, we like sports. Like, Mm -hmm. there is this pervasive culture of we just love sports, whether it's our, um, our Boston Marathon or our Celtics, our Bruins, our Patriots, like, like, we just, we love sports, and we love our college teams, and we, like, it's just very, very, like, huge, and that's, like, throughout the state, but definitely in the Boston area, like, we're intense about that, like, I, I think one of my Irish colleagues said it the best when he told me that, he's like, everybody here is really, really nice, but then they get really intense when you talk to them about sports. Yes, (laughs) yes, I will give you that for New England, 100%. They're um, nice, but if you get on their things, they're like, oh, well, this, yeah. yeah. Sports or whatever um, their thing is. Some of them have other things. Yeah, yeah. and um, I also think that people are very, very, like, we're, we're very proud of the communities that we come from. Even if, like, you know, the community's gone through hardships or things have changed or if it's recently become, like, a really vibrant community and before when we were growing up it wasn't as much, like, we're very proud to come from where we come from. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's this sense of... um like camaraderie in that um where um this is graduation weekend in my hometown and we recently ha- had our alumni banquet and organizations like the Kiwanis and key club and the lions club and the american legion and Ameri- and sons of the american legion give out scholarships to our community 
and um and to the kids that are going to school and just that idea that like remembering where you come from um mm-hmm. is such a huge part of our cultural identity and i think that's that's true of a lot of small town new englanders that if you ask them about their town um and their community they can tell you how it impacted their lives and if you if they went back and needed help like their town would help them in a heartbeat mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter where you are economically or politically like i know that my town has my back so that's something that i think is like very very new england and, and it's probably true i i don't i don't have experience living in the midwest or living in the south and i, I think that there's probably some similarities there too with people that are very proud to be where they come from and knowing that no matter what your community has your back how you're saying that it's kind of like it reminds me of there's two tv shows that are popping into my head about this <laughs> Um, one being Gilmore Girls, which is the small New England town. Yeah. <laughs> Stars Hollow, Connecticut. They're very connected. They're very proud. The other, which actually filmed on the same set, is Heart of Dixie. Ugh, yes. yes. Where they're yeah. all, that's a southern town. That's Alabama. Sm- the Heart of Dixie town. They're all very aware of each other's situations. They're very connected to the people in their town. And they have this kind of like town pride. And that is something that you don't find quite as much in the tri-state area i mean people do have roots but you don't necessarily know everybody in your town you don't know right. their life stories i actually pointed this out when kayla was living with me there were places that i had been going to for years because we were pretty close to my hometown we didn't live in my hometown but we lived probably 15 minutes outside of it there were places we went to that i had been going to for years i didn't know anybody who worked there i just like go in buy my coffee leave right and she's there for three months and she's like best friends with all the people who work (laughs) there and i'm like oh that's different cool um and it's that's why i think it's really important to have people from other communities who are in your social circle because you you see those different sides of things and you learn those things and i think that we definitely get a bad rap um tri-state area people (laughs) as being cold and to some extent it's true, but I think that it has to do with the culture that we were brought up in. It has to do with how fast paced and intense everything is in life. And I think it's important to to see people from other areas to kind of know that difference. Um, whether it's being more open by seeing people from New England, from the South, or whether the opposite way, it's going into a Northern culture and getting to a point where you're like organized and on top of things. Um, that maybe isn't the same level of of intense organization that you would find in other areas. So I think there's there's pros and cons to all areas. And I mean, like, I'm a Jersey girl. I have lived in New Jersey my entire life. But not all areas of New Jersey are the same. And I've noticed this, too. That's true. I now live in central Jersey. And New Jersey is really three different areas. It's really completely different. Mm-hmm. So North Jersey, where I grew up, is close to that Manhattan hub. Central Jersey, you can get to Manhattan or Philly pretty much even time. But you also have, like, the Jersey Shore kind of there. You have different energies. You have different environments. I'm kind of halfway between New Brunswick and Princeton, which for people who are not from the area, um, Princeton University, I'm sure, we're more aware of than Princeton in general. Um, It's about halfway down the state. And New Brunswick is where the um, the headquarters of Rutgers is. Rutgers, though, kind of expands the whole state. <laughs> so so they, they really take over true. the state. Like, if you want to know who's in charge of something and it's New Jersey, it's probably Rutgers. <laughs> so I live down there. And it's very different from the northern energy. There's a lot of, it's still, it still has that kind of feeling of a lot going on. But it has it in a more calm way. It's like I have access to everything that I need. It's everything's nearby, everything's close, but it's a little it's a little bit chiller. And from what I've heard, I'm not too familiar with South Jersey, but from what I've heard that has a similar experience as well. And the big the big difference, the line between and people will disagree with you from all over the state when you're in North Jersey, Central Jersey, South Jersey. It's whatever they didn't grow up in. But um the dividing line, I think, is where they start saying pork roll instead of Taylor. Oh, Hill. it's yeah. It's and I Taylor Ham. Well, okay, I agree it's Taylor Ham, but I do live in Pork Roll territory now. <laughs> so that's another thing. Um, if you're not from New Jersey, it is a breakfast meat yeah, that yeah. only exists in New Jersey that is delightful. 
um, salty. It's kind of like a cross between like ham, pastrami kind of deal. And there's a big fight in it's New Jersey. Like whether Canadian bacon almost. Oh, I, I, would, I wouldn't call it Canadian bacon as much. But, but it's kind of like that. It's uh, kind of a Canadian bacon and Spam had a child. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, so it is a breakfast meat that is only available in New Jersey. And, and some parts of Philly. And some parts I of Philly. Thought. Yeah. Or, you know, shortly outside of New Jersey. Um, yeah. And there's a big debate over whether it's called Taylor ham or pork roll. I tend to go with Taylor ham because it's where I grew up. Always and also that. because it's more specific. Taylor ham refers to a specific type of of meat it, re- it refers to the seasonings that the way it's cured pork roll is just pork and roll like if i roll up a piece of pork is it a pork roll right so oh, no. i i think that that's a <laughs> difference um okay so that's my little take on new jersey differences in cultures it is a very different world i think that wherever you're from whether you're from the midwest the west the south the the new england area the um, tri-state area that you'll notice that um, the mainstream media and just people's perceptions will um, kind of dictate how culturally you're seen. And I think that, like, yes, like, I'm from a small town, but it's not like I walk down the street like Belle from Beauty and the Beast and like, bonjour, bonjour. It's like, it's not like that. And of <laughs> course, like, not everybody from New York, New Jersey is like that, like, cold, like, outward cold person who, like, not. just needs to get in a rush. Like, I had people from um I think I'm Denville. pretty friendly. Yeah. yeah, I had people from Denville, New Jersey, and maybe this is because I talk entirely too much too, but I, I recently went back to Denville um and I walk into a store I went into a lot and the owner was like, Where have you been? And I'm like, I moved to Massachusetts. <laughs> but like <laughs> but like they they remembered like that yeah. I came in there a lot. So like there's a sense of like there are these like little microcultures everywhere, but it's they're dramatized in a lot of people's minds too mm-hmm. so y- yes there are very very tiny towns in new england but not really like Lorelai and rory experience <laughs> and yes there are you know big city like people in a rush all the time but it's not like the devil wears prada all the time in new yes. York city. yes so like it, you know um yeah i think that's important to note too mm-hmm Give the Spice State area some love, too. I mean, I'm from New England, but I, I love... Some of the best people I know are from New Jersey, so... Like us? <laughs> and it is New York. a good place. Like, I do enjoy... I do enjoy being there. It has that mix between the city fast pace and some of the more relaxed... Being in the suburbs right. part. Some of Long the more Island relaxed things. Too. Long Island is kind of similar, yeah. 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 I miss it. Well, well, Caitlin, you were going to say something before she started talking. Yeah, sorry, Kate. Oh, no. I was going to talk about how my parents have a house in southern Jersey. So our house is near Long Beach Island, which is the main, like, a big beach tourist area. But we also, we're about 20 minutes from it, so we have that small local town. I mean, it's not small, small, but it's relatively small. Um, so we have that the locals in the small town feel... But then you go 10 minutes, 15 minutes away, and you get the big tourists. Um, so we get a lot of the, like, the locals, but we also get what we're called Bennies, which are the people who are that are come just every like weekend, who you get like from the Belmar, Elizabeth, Newark, and New York, all those that come to the Jersey Shore for it. They're called Bennies. I, I think my parents are considered Bennies, especially since we're there every weekend, but we can also be considered locals because the people at the Dunkin' Donuts know my order every time I'm there. <laughs> so right. it's... Yeah. It's definitely interesting, but I like it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's really cool how there's all these little microcultures within right. places, and you were saying, like, the Bennies versus the, right. the locals. I think that's true. That's kind of like how Vermont is when we go there yeah. for skiing. Like, mm-hmm. there are places that we know there. Um, like, you know, the people who work at Zoe's, we know them. Love Zoe's. <laughs> Shout out Zoe's. Zoe's Double Hex in Manchester, Vermont. If you're if you're going through there, we love them. I was there once with your dad and my dad on one of those negative twenty degree days that we were skiing, and <laughs> we we got there for lunch afterwards because it was one of those where we skied from seven to ten and went home and quit after this. All the people showed up, and we were sitting there having lunch, and in walks Kim and Nancy Morba, <laughs> and Nancy was like, "Hey, that's Bob's car," so we all joined and. Of course, they know yeah. the people that work at Zoe's too. So there's a lot of people that you meet and keep in touch with in that in that area. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, another thing about the 
one of the big differences between the different areas is the difference between like a culture hub and like the outskirts of it. So like New York City might have a bad rap for being brash and harsh, but the amount of culture there is incredible. So, you know, you have Broadway, you have the art museums, you have uh, ballets, you have, you have really every kind of art that you could think of. Um, so I think that that's something to be said for cities, you know, if we're not just talking culturally. And once you figure out how to navigate cities, they're kind of fun. Yeah. I also think that people have a blunt idea of what a city is. And people think that New York City is Times Square. Right. Which is not. I, Times Square not. is my least favorite You're part of New York City. Times Square, Square like the plague. I hate Times Square. And those things Why? that dressed up the, the little costume part, they're characters. They're so creepy and like... Um, no, they, no. Yeah, they they take they, they come up to you, they try to take pictures with you, and then they try to charge you for it. Right. The costume characters. Or they try to get handsy and feely, and you're like, back off. Well, that's yeah. theater district, and part of that's in Times Square. So yeah. that part's okay. Well, you you do have to cross through Times Square to get to the theater district, yes. But the theater district is worth it. You just you just power walk through Times Square. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you get... <laughs> go, go, go. You what? get through... Blinders on. Yep. Blinders on. Yeah, power like, you can't, you can't... Blinders deal on, with headphones all the craziness in. that's happening. Um, because people will try to take advantage of you in Times Square. They that's will. where you're going to find pickpockets. That's where you're going to... F- I, I know that, like, I, I've walked through all different parts of the city. I've been to, you know, Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, like, everything. Um, and the place that I've been approached by someone who made me feel uncomfortable and can't call the most is Times Square. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, People are emboldened by the fact that other people are doing it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I haven't been a cat called other places in New York City. Um, I also walk with headphones so I can ignore people. Yep, um, I do that too. So you don't but, have to plug it into anything. Nope, just but, plug um, it in. They think. But it. Um, I, maybe it's because I. It goes back to the fact that I had to commute through the city, but like I always avoided Times Square. I know the lights are pretty. I know that a lot of stuff happens in Times Square, and there's a lot of cool events. But like I, I don't know. It just lost. It lost its like shininess, shiny allure to me after really? I worked in it for three years. There are many no. classier places. Right. I'm, yes. I get that kind of way with DC too, because I'm working a lot in DC now with the one project I'm on, and I'll just plug in headphones, not even have to be listening to anything, and just because we're right by the White House too, so we get a lot of uh, a lot of tourists wanting to go to the White House, and then we get a lot of the political stuff, and I just go. <laughs> well, political stuff is a whole other ball yeah, of wax. Yeah. Like every area has its own right political culture too but i feel like that could be a whole different episode because okay another thing i wrote down um vocabulary differences (laughs) ah there are some words that are like exclusive to certain areas that i think are really interesting and it's always good to expand your vocabulary like soda pop means soda in like the midwest Yeah. yeah yeah or um if you're from my town i could say that um Hey guys, do you want to go grab a grinder and then grab a sip of water from the bubbler, and then we'll go to Dunks and get a coffee, but then we'll stop <laughs> at the pack. Make sure, we have some beer. Um, make sure we avoid the rotary so that we don't get caught in traffic, mm. and um, then we'll go get ice cream and get some jinnies on top. So that entire <laughs> statement, I understand it just because I know you so right. well now. But yeah. before I met you, um, about half of those words. Yeah, they're not in my vocabulary. So why don't you translate, Kayla? If we're all going to get grinders, grinders is what we call subs, subs or hoagies. Subs, or hoagies, from, heroes, whatever you call yeah. them, yeah. depending um, on where you're from. I'm trying to. Yeah. If you're if you're taking if you were a little kid and you needed to get a drink of water in school, you'd go to the bubbler. Or so, if you're from Boston, the, the bubbler. Or the um, water fountain, which right. is in the in the. If you're not familiar with a bubbler, water fountain. And then um, I, I said I wanted to go to Dunks. We, we don't usually say Dunkin' Donuts. We just say we're going to Dunks. And if you want a coffee with cream and sugar at Dunks in Boston, then you just say you want a regular coffee. If you ask for a regular coffee, then they're going to put cream and sugar in it. So don't do that. You just say, like, black coffee. Or just say, like, I want a medium hot with this. But if you right. say regular, you're getting cream and sugar. Um, a packy is a what we call the package store. It's just a liquor store. So they were going to the Packy. It's, you know, it's a package store and it's where you get beer mm-hmm. or beer. Um, yeah. You're from Boston. Beer yeah. and beer. Um, and then um, we call extra thick milkshakes fraps. 
Um, I know that if you go to New York, that means frappuccino, but that's not the case. If you, if you want a nice thick, you know, with hard serve ice cream, you know, mixed with milk, then that's a frap. You can get a strawberry frap, a blueberry frap, a chocolate frap. It's, you won't get coffee in it. So don't, don't fear. If you want a soft serve ice cream in Massachusetts, you say soft serve. If you want one in parts of Vermont, you say creamy. And then occasionally we'll interchange, but we say sprinkles and jimmies. Mm -hmm. so, but didn't you say that the chocolate ones versus the rainbow ones had a different word? Yeah, I mean, like, some people some people say, like, just chocolate jimmies and rainbow sprinkles, and then, like, I, I find myself saying both jimmies sometimes. You're also um, very multicultural. Right. You travel quite a bit, so. Yeah, so, um, and then a rotary is um, a traffic circle. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, like, oh, who's not everybody knows handles? that. Well, so, jug handle is exclusive to New Jersey, not a jug handle, a traffic circle. Oh, okay. Yeah, jug handles are um, was my it was my own personal hell when I first got to New Jersey because I I was like why can't I left turn oh, that's like crazy. I just like I, yeah. I couldn't like I couldn't <laughs> handle it and then I was like oh these are these things called jug handles right. and they were like my nemesis yeah if <laughs> but, you are not familiar with New Jersey jug <laughs> handles are where you have to make a right turn to make a left turn so you would go down a road you turn to the right it loops you back around so that you can cross over the road and, make and then make your left um and they do that to handle the traffic because new jersey has traffic coming in from philly and new york so it's a very dense traffic area so instead of making left turns you go right to go left so that it kind of it allows traffic lights to control the left turns um, but if you're not from the area, it's like, what is this? I grew up with it, so it's not that weird right. for me, but yeah. I, I remember when I first moved down to Virginia, I, I remember I was like, oh, I can make a left. <laughs> it's like these random spots where I could just make a left instead of having to go all the way around. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I don't have to spend an extra two minutes going out of my way just to make a left turn. On the other side of that, when I first moved to New Jersey, I got stuck on um, one of the roads for, because I didn't understand jug handles. Um, so I thought that they were just like a bunch of other turns that were taking me other places. So I stayed on 287 oh, for like no. a good half hour extra before I realized I could turn around and like, it, it was just bad. It was, I mean, it was one of those things that like looking back, it's hilarious because like, it's like, was it 287? 287 is a super highway. I, okay. So no, but like, so I, I went on to 287 and then I exited onto 10. Oh, okay. And, well, on 10. Um, yeah. And on then. From a from a comedy comedy point of view, it's hilarious. But from a like, I'm like a, I'm 25 years old and I should have my crap together. Point of view, it's kind of sad. <laughs> like, what are other vocabulary differences? I remember my first day at Kutz because I went to school at Kutztown University in the middle of like nowhere, Pennsylvania. And the first day I went and got a sandwich for lunch. And they're like, would you like a grinder or a panini? And I'm like, what the heck is a grinder? I was like, I've never heard of yeah, that before. Yeah, Pennsylvania. I was like, huh? What? It was really funny. They're like, you're not from around here, are you? I'm like, nope. I knew I loved Pennsylvania for a reason. I was just telling my friends in Philly that I just love Pennsylvania. And they were like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. It, just, it has the same feeling as home. And now I know that it just must be because they call sandwiches grinders. <laughs> they yeah. do. I secretly found that out. But like, they also call them whole regular sandwich yeah, with normal bread is a grinder? No. It's a sub. A, a sub is a grinder. Yeah. I thought that was a hoagie. Okay. No, a not in Massachusetts. Hoagie, a hoagie is a sub, is a grinder. Hoagie, they're sub, grinder, hero, they're all synonyms. Yeah. Depends where you're from. I feel like I like was going to like burst into, into song, like, hoagie is a sub, is a grinder. You can make a song. <laughs> the one that messed with me, and really, like, context clue-wise, it should have been an obvious thing, but when I went to the nearest and they were like, well, two things happened all in a span of one week. One, I, I ordered a chocolate frap and I got something coffee, and that was deeply upsetting to me. And then um, the second one was that I couldn't find the sandwich list and because it said hero. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, <laughs> and, like, I get it. Like, I, I can order a hero now in New York City, and I know why, but I still don't understand. Like, unless this sandwich was, like, brought down to you at your time of most dire hunger need, I don't understand call the hero like <laughs> it's just like is this the clark kent of sandwiches is this the bruce wayne of sandwiches what is happening it defeats like, hunger <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
one thing that I noticed immediately is that and a lot of my friends from Ireland, my friends from England have told have helped me to correct my ways, the error of my ways when going to other countries. But as people from the United States, I feel like and when I say Americans in this context, I'm talking about Americans from the United States, not from North America and South America, just so that people understand where I'm coming from. Americans have a tendency to say, oh, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm Irish and, um, and French Canadian and, you know, a tiny bit of this. And, um, and in other countries, that, that is not what we are. Um, You're just American. Kind of, American. We, kind of, we kind of base our identities based on, like, what the backgrounds and cultures and ethnicities our of our ancestors. And it's something that we do and that all of us, it's, I think it's one thing that unites us all as a country that everybody kind of does that same thing, whether you're from California or if you're from um, South Dakota, like people will do that. But when I go to Ireland, my Irish friends are like, you're American. <laughs> like that is what you are. And then, so I've learned to say, I'm an American with Irish ancestry. Or I am an American with French Canadian heritage, but I, but it grinds people's gears in other countries when we say that we're Irish and French Canadian and Italian and Portuguese. <laughs> but because we're not, we're not, we're we're not part of those cultures. Yeah, it, it, we're we're American. So I think that that's like no matter where I've gone, because you know I I visited, like I said, Ireland and the UK and Iceland and Guatemala and. It doesn't matter what their culture is. If I say I'm Irish or French Canadian, they're like, yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> so I thought that that was interesting that it tends to be a very American thing to do to like, cult, to identify based on a b- bunch of different backgrounds, like your hometown, your family's culture, your this, your that. Whereas like my friend Amy from Ireland is like, I'm, I'm Amy and I'm Irish <laughs> or I'm from Cork. So it's very it's different in that way. I'm not sure if you guys have run into that too, but I've trained myself to say I am from the United States. I am American with Irish and French Canadian ancestry. I mean, not that one so much because I haven't been to countries as much as you have. But um, the time I went to see you when you were in grad school over there, there were quite a few things that um, ran into. Even just the fact that like they use some of the same words, but for different meanings. Like, cheers does not mean cheers. Cheers yeah. means, like, thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they said, uh, like, oh, great, you gave me directions. Cheers. Like, they're, they're not <laughs> clinking a glass. They're they're just saying thank you. But if they want to do what we call cheers, it's slancha. Which is yeah. good health. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of different words like that. Um, there's also some, like, across the pond isms that like, either England the or Ireland or any of those areas around there. Um well, they, they call, they call, we call underwear, they call pants. So, yeah. to them, pants are like, what underwear are you wearing? For us, like, and, pants are like a pair of jeans. And chips are, in the UK, chips are french fries. Crisps. And crisps are potato chips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, the, you can't ask for a ride, because that means something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, asking, you always ask for a lift. Yeah, because um, here it's like, you know, will you give me a ride to the airport? That means, can I come in your car? And, like, you drive me there. That doesn't mean something different where, like, can I ride on top of you sort of deal. <laughs> so there's a lot of different things that are almost humorous because we say something so different. Um, what else? Biscuits and cookies? <sighs> yeah, I also think it's interesting, like, besides just, like, some of the the word differences, which, like, as we discussed just in the United States, you can find those going four hours from New Jersey to Massachusetts is that I think that sometimes people will go to, and this is because, I mean, I work in study abroad, so I hear a lot of student stories. I I get a lot of stories from students returning who say, I kind of expected in a naive way that because I was going to an English-speaking country, it would be the same as the United States. And it's like, yeah, right. so (laughs) different. And like, just the, you know, the confusion behind just because, people in Ireland and Scotland and Wales and England speak English. And honestly, we're such an Anglo-centric world right now. Um, most other countries speak English and we're very blessed that they do because I wish that our country was more on top of making sure everybody learns a second language, but we're not. But anyways, I digress. Yes. Um, the world caters to us and it's not fair. Um, <laughs> this is true. Um, in any case, like, going to Ireland is, just because the Irish speak 
English. That does not mean that the Irish are American. Like, it's very, of course not. Um, but, like, I feel like sometimes people go abroad to a country where, you know, they do speak the language, so there's that, there's no, that barrier is gone. And then when things happen, like, the, I, like, I know that my Irish friends are, the, the Irish are super, super friendly, but they're also very, very sarcastic and they have dry humor and, and Americans conversely get easily offended and <laughs> are so interested in PC things that even that difference can be like a clash. So, um, it's just interesting. I actually just got back from the, um, the NAFSA yeah. International Education Conference in Philadelphia. And, um, one of the best sessions that I attended was led by someone who, was trying to break the United States out of the confines of being so PC. Um, and there are many, many good things about being like obviously accepting of other cultures and people from all different um, races, religions, sexual orientations, etc. But I feel like sometimes we tiptoe so much that we forget that in order to learn, we have to ask the questions. And sometimes that's uncomfortable, but it's important. Um, whether you're visiting Georgia, um, like Georgia for the first time or whether you're visiting Barcelona for the first time. And the, the session was just about like really being able to like question people, not like question interrogate, but like ask people questions about their cultures and where they come from, because that's how you learn. And then that's how you become more accepting individual. So that kind of took like a, you know, a veer off for a second, but I think it's important. Yeah. Like culturally speaking that, People just need to never be afraid to ask questions, especially in a PC world where maybe we feel like we shouldn't because we don't want to offend someone. But isn't it more offensive to not want to know? I'm trying to think of other things that really surprised me. I, I think one thing in a cool way, when I was in Antigua, Guatemala, building houses through um, an incredible nonprofit organization called Open Houses Homes. If you haven't chosen your charity of choice this year and you are looking to give back, it's a great great nonprofit organization. It's a teach a man to fish organization and they provide homes for families as well as education and health care for children and adults um, and education for children up to eighth grade, which is huge the difference between being literate and illiterate for some people. Um, so when I was in Antigua, there were parts of the city that were um, very affluent and others that were quite impoverished. And I remember when I was down there, my friend Kim and I went shopping and we went grocery shopping and she left her wallet on the um, place, like the checkout area of the grocery store. And we walked like probably a good two blocks before we realized it was gone. And a man who was wearing, you know, traditional, traditional Guatemalan um, wear. And I just remember seeing his shoes and they were just very worn shoes. And he was running with my friend Kim's wallet and he returned it. And there was no, you know, no, nothing was taken out of it. And yeah. he was clearly an individual who could have used the money that was in her wallet. I just remember being so shocked in the best of ways that someone who was in need still made the effort to run after someone who probably both Kim and I probably could have survived, you know, taking out another amount of cash and, you know, we would have been fine. It wouldn't have broken the bank for either of us to have lost that cash. But just growing up close to cities and having worked in cities where if you lost, if you left your wallet, the chances of you getting it back without money taken out of it was <laughs> slim to nil. And then you're in this place that someone really could have used that money and they still ran several blocks to catch up to you. That was something that I just was blown away by the kindness and just selflessness of the people in Antigua. And it, that's just that's one great. example of like just that community feel and how people took care of everybody else. So yeah, that's that was awesome. probably one of my favorite stories from that area. Well, in, in kind of the complete opposite of what you were talking about, Kayla, is the um, culture in Cairo, Egypt. Because, you know, in over there, they are a third world country, so they kind of rely on tourists giving them money. Like we had, when I was there a couple of years ago, they had a lot of kids coming up to you begging for money. And if you did lose your wallet, they would take what they needed out of there because they had a lot of worn shoes too. A lot of them were barefoot. A lot of the kids didn't have many cl like, so it was kind of complete opposite. And it was like, you had to be careful with the pit pocketers because they would kind of take what they need. That's so cool that you went to Cairo. And yeah. My brother, um, my brother is kind of the world traveler like Kayla and he did, um, an American university in Cairo for oh, wow. a semester or two. Um, so they had off for some Arabic holidays, so we went out, we went over and visited. 
So we did like the pyramids and the we did the cruise up and down the Nile River. And the, another thing I noticed, Americans over since we were like we took the cruise up and down the Nile, and we were the only Americans. So there was a bunch of Chinese and Italians on the cruise with us, and we were Westerners to them. We weren't <laughs> Americans. We were just Westerners, which was interesting. But yeah, the, the culture and the the living area over there it is it is definitely a third world country, and it does yeah. kind of make you appreciate what we do have. Did you feel safe when you were there, though? Well, we had guides, so they kind of knew how to, the people, with the, like the beggars, they weren't allowed on the the cruises, like the tourist areas, and we had a lot of guides with us that, you know, speak the language and can, like, shoo them away, so to speak. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, we felt safe just because we were kind of more in the touristy sections than... Yeah. And it's also interesting because they, they make their living on making these beautiful scarves and then, like, selling them to us for, like, $2 because to them that's a lot of money. So right. you can get a – I still have, like, 10 scarves, and they're beautiful scarves. It's sad. I mean, I don't want to go back, but, I mean, it was a great vacation. Um, but it, it does kind of make you appreciate what you have here. Yeah, I would like to go there someday and, like, see all the pyramids oh the pyramids up closer i mean like we took a camel ride around the pyramids and it, they're amazing and the nile river we took a cruise mm-hmm. it, was, it was a great vacation all right and i think it's interesting too because two of my best friends are in multiracial marriages like my friend katie's husband is chinese and my friend rita is indian so it's interesting and her to husband's see, white and yeah. her husband's italian yeah so it's interesting to see that, like, with their weddings, it's interesting to see how their weddings are different from our weddings. Yeah, that Indian wedding was very interesting. And I got to wear a sari, and it was so much fun. It was pretty. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, seeing different cultures in that sense, um, even being to, you know, I've been to a couple gay weddings. Oh, That's interesting, funny. too, because they're not usually the traditional religious ones, but I've been to actually religious versions of gay marriages, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, you went to the same ones I did, I think. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, there was one that was actually in a Methodist church, like inside the church. And there was one that was officiated by a Catholic priest. It was just outside. Interesting. So, you know, I think not connecting things to be judgmental, like not connecting things like you know, gay marriages are not religious ever or things mm. like, you know, um, figuring out like politics of people like saying like, Oh, well everybody from New York is a liberal and everybody from the South is a conservative, like not necessarily. Mm. So, yeah. you know, figuring things out individually about people being open to more cultures. I think that's the important takeaway here. And yeah. And on that point, knowing that people can be a bunch of different cultures all in one, like, I mean, like I like to say that I am, um, an American with Irish and French Canadian ancestry who is a registered Democrat who believes in gay marriage. Who's also a practicing Catholic. Like I go to church every Sunday. So you can be more than one thing and it's okay. Like not every, you know, not everybody in this religion is this political party, not everybody. So it, like, like Chelsea said, just be open to that and know that you don't have to define yourself based on one thing. And not yeah. everybody is defined based on the one stereotype of one particular thing that they do or are. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Well, that was a very interesting conversation about cultures. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to go explore Saint some, of the, some of the historic culture of St. Augustine. All right. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a good rest of your trip. Thank you. I hope fun. I get home on, you know, normal time. Yeah, I guess like one, one closing remark, I think that it's important that we just need to be open-minded and question everything and understand that just because something is different, it doesn't mean it's incorrect. One thing that I learned working in study abroad is that there's a difference between being unsafe and being uncomfortable. And I think that a lot of Americans need to learn how to be uncomfortable in something and know that that's okay. Um, because when you're uncomfortable, that's when you learn and you embrace some of the moments in your life when you feel uncomfortable and then figure out how to learn from them. Well, also, you know, people listening from other regions other countries other areas of our country we would love to hear your thoughts on this because we do have somewhat of a bias that we're from the northeastern united states that's where all of us are from so we would love to hear your takes on different areas especially if you disagree with us you can always send us a message or an email and of course be be kind no matter who you talk to always be kind (laughs) but if you disagree like definitely let us know um and because you can disagree with someone in a kind and civil way 
even if our politicians don't know how. Um, but well, that's yeah. that's a whole so, other story. We're not talking about that. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week for another episode of the Sabio Files. If you would like to suggest a topic, leave a comment, tell us a little about you. You can email us at sapiofilespodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Sapiofiles. And always remember to rate and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. Have a great day. Explore your cultures. And always stay curious.